Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we are taking a look at the talent system for Death Knights going into Dragonflight. Blizzard released a full preview today, this is of course just a first draft, so there are bound to be some changes, especially if we give feedback, but going from Shadowlands to Dragonflight, Blizzard opted to redo the entire talent system. We're moving away from the boring system we currently have, where you get a couple choices but nothing really meaningful. And we're going back to the old ways, but improved. You're going to have a general talent tree and a spec specific talent tree. The general one is going to be the same across all specs. You will have a total of 31 talent points to put in the general one and 30 to put in the spec specific one. The way they are approaching this is that when you're leveling level 1 through 9 uh, or 1 through 10, you're going to get a couple abilities here and there that are absolutely crucial to your spec. And these are typically going to be abilities that don't really have too much combat implication. Uh, for DK specifically they do, but for some other classes it's going to be some stuff like buffs, one or two offensive spells, um, and a few utility spells. But besides that, everything else is going to come from the talent trees. In the general tree, you're going to get typically defensive spells, utility spells, uh, things like that. And then in the spec tree, you're going to get all your rotational abilities that you're going to use. And the way everything is laid out is that at the top of the talent tree, you have the core abilities, stuff that you can't live without. On DK, on the general tree, it's like AMS, for example, or Icebound Fortitude, Interrupt. Um, and then in the spec, you have the core rotational abilities, Fast Strength Strike, you know, Obliterate, things like that. And then as you move further down the, the class tree or the spec tree, you are going to have options. You're going to make choices between uh, specializing for, you know, as an Unholy DK, do you want a pet build? Do you want a wound build? As a Frost DK, do you want an Obliterate two-handed build? Or do you want a Breath of Syndragosa build? Things like that. So at the top, it's very core and specific things that you need for your spec to function and as you move further down it's going to be making choices and uh, creating builds that synergize well together. So in this video I want to go over some cool talents that they added. I'm not going to cover every single one because frankly there's just way too much and it would be an hour long video. So I wanted to go over some of the stuff that they're adding that I find interesting and maybe talk a little bit about how I see these talent trees working out. So first of all, let's cover the abilities that we get by default. There's very few. We get Death Coil, Death Grip, Rune Forging, Dark Command, Death Gate, On a Pale Horse, uh, which is a passive, Path of Frost, Death and Decay, and Rune Strike. So Rune Strike is something we haven't had since WAD, I believe. Um, while I don't think it's going to get too much use once your end game, but while leveling, it is something that you might press once in a while. And who knows, maybe they'll tune it so it's going to be a rotational ability even at end game builds. So first let's cover the general talents. So here, like I said, the first couple rows are super generic and they're just spells that you must have. So in the first row, you will get one of these talents for free depending on what spec you are. Uh, for Frost, you get Chains of Ice. For Blood, you get Death Strike. And for Unholy, you get Raise Dead. Now, that's not to say that if you're another spec, you can still take these. But if, let's say, you're a Frost DK, you will get Chains of Ice without having to spend a talent point. But if you're a Blood DK, you can still pick up Chains of Ice. It will just cost you a point. Um, then in the second row, you get Mind Freeze, AMS, and Death and Decay. So Death and Decay, again, this is something that um, is kind of iconic. They added the bonus that Obliterate also strikes an additional target, like the Night Fae uh, Death and Decay does. But for Blood and Unholy, it will work the same way as it does. Um, in row 3, IBF, a passive, another passive, another passive, and then you get Brittle. Uh, so Brittle essentially works the same way as Sinful Revelation. Sometimes your target will take 6% increased damage from you for 5 seconds. So it is kind of a passive, but uh, potentially it's one of those things where you can spec your general tree to be a lot more damage focused uh, versus just utility and, and defensive focused. 
Row 4, you get Binding Sleep, Permafrost, Death Pact, Wraith Walk, Sacrificial Pact, and Unholy Ground. I believe Unholy Ground is the only new one here, which is 5% haste whenever you are within your Death and Decay. We have this currently as a Legendary. Uh, it's of course a lot more powerful, but this will be something that it's a nice little bonus to have. In row 5, you will pick up AMZ, which is of course crucial, and then you get two passives. Um, row 6, Proliferating Chill. Uh, if you've done Torghast, this is a Torghast power where your Chains of Ice affects one additional nearby enemy. Very useful for PvP potentially. Um, where of course a lot of your runes go towards refreshing your chains of ice. So having to press it less often, definitely a good thing from me. Then here is where we see the first choice nodes. So choice nodes are essentially, from what I've observed, they're talents that we have in Shadowlands that tend to be on the same row or very similar kind of abilities um, that will then lead you to more specialized builds. So essentially you spend one talent point and you get to pick between two talents. Uh, so it's impossible to have both of these. The first choice node we have is Runic Empowerment or Runic Corruption. Both of these function the same way. Runic Empowerment is something we have as Frost DKs right now, and Runic Corruption of course is something you get as an Unholy DK. Um, so this does mean that you can potentially have Runic Empowerment as an Unholy DK and a Blood DK um, if you want to. Then we have Anticipation, which is the conduit we have right now. Whenever you get a successful interrupt, you get 10 runic power, and the cooldown of your interrupt is reduced. You get Asphyxiate DA, Anti-Magic Barrier, which is currently just an unholy talent, but again, will be accessible to everyone next experience, and Control on Undead. Um, then you get another Choice node. Here it's between Death's Reach and Grip of the Dead. Again, two talents that are very common, and usually Grip of the Dead ends up being more useful. <laughs> um, we also have Enfeeble here. Uh, this is something that was an artifact weapon passive in Shadowlands, or in Legion, if I remember correctly. Um, your ghoul has a chance to apply Enfeeble to your target, reducing their movement speed, and the damage they deal to you by 15% for 6 seconds. Um, so that's definitely going to be something that is going to come in handy. Row 7, we have Acclamation, um, Assimilation. Assimilation is the one that to me stands out as, wow, this has a ton of potential. The amount, of, the amount absorbed by your AMZ is increased by 10%, which is like not a big deal. Uh, and it grants up to 100 runic power based on the amount absorbed. What? Just think about Breath of Sintragosa builds. You drop your AMZ in raid situation, like on raid bosses, there's usually a guarantee if there's an AoE attack and you drop your AMZ, it's going to get used up. So you can get up to 100 runic power from your AMZ. That's insane! Um, so <laughs> during your Breath of Sintragosa, you drop your AMZ, it recharges your runic power. Uh, if you're unholy, and you're playing, let's say, a Gargoyle build, you get 100 runic power during your cooldowns, if it lines up correctly, of course. But the potential of this is super interesting to me. Um, then in row 8, Icy Talons increases your attack speed, but again, it is accessible to Unholy. Um, then you get Horn of Winter, um, improved Death Strike. This is more useful for blood, but for PvP, it could also be pretty useful. Uh, for the DPS specs, Will of the Necropolis, and Unholy Bond. Unholy Bond is, uh, increases the effectiveness of your Rune Forge. This was a trait that we have right now. I don't remember what the percent is on the trait. I think it was only like 10% or 15%. So having 30% increased effectiveness from your Rune Forge, uh, that's pretty cool. Row 9, you get RA, Rune Mastery. Consuming a rune has a chance to increase your strength, so just kind of a passive uh, power gain. Blood Draw, this is a new one. When you fall below 30% health, you drain health from nearby enemies. Can only occur once every 3 minutes. Of course, on single target, probably not going to be all that useful, but let's say you're a Blood DK and you're tanking keys, and you have 10 enemies around you, 5 enemies around you, whatever, and you get chunked. Might heal back to full, who knows? But this, again, it has potential. Um, I definitely like the idea. 
then Death's Echo, Death's Advance, Death MDK, and Death Grip have one additional charge. Of course, um, any utility talent like that, when it doesn't sacrifice you giving up damage, because we've had things like this in the past, PvP talents, legendaries, so on and so forth, uh, but it always came at a huge cost. Like, you know, if you want double Death Grip on a Blood DK, you're giving up your other legendary slot. Um, so just having this at the expense of another utility talent might actually make it um, see some use. Then in the last row, this is where you get kind of the juicy stuff. You get Empowered Rune Weapon. Now, Empowered Rune Weapon is going to work the same way, but look at this last sentence. If Empowered Rune Weapon is not talented elsewhere on the tree, this grants one charge of Empowered Rune Weapon. Now, what that means, in the Frost DK spec-specific tree, there's another Empowered Rune Weapon talent. So you can take this one and that one. And I think what it means is that you can have two charges of Empowered Rune Weapon. I'm not sure, but if that's what it means, which is something we had back in Legion, again with a Legendary, double Empowered Rune Weapon for Frost, uh, especially with the Breath of Sindragosa build, uh, was super good to have. Then A-Bomb Limb. Of course, a bomb limb became kind of a staple, iconic DK spell, so they are adding it in the general talent section. And then lastly, you get Soul Reaper, but again, you can take it as any of the specs. Um, you strike an enemy, works the same way as does, it's an execute ability. First for the spec ones, let's take a look at Unholy. The first couple rows, like I said, it's general stuff, it's just adding the core abilities to your build, and then once you get about halfway down the talent tree, once you get to the choice nodes, from there on it becomes a little bit more uh, specific. The first couple rows you get Fester Strike, Scourge Strike, Raise Dead, uh, well Improve Raise Dead, it just makes it so your ghouls are permanent, Sudden Doom, Outbreak, and then in row 4 you get Replenishing Wound, it makes it so whenever you pop a wound you get Runic Power, um, more damage on Festering Strike, and Infectious Wounds, which makes it so your Festering Strike can apply more wounds, um, and Epidemic. In row 5, you get more damage on Scourge Strike, uh, Harbinger of Doom, which it's been a dead talent for a very long time, but with this talent tree, there might be the potential for it. I would still like to see this number a little bit higher though. And Dark Transformation, of course, an iconic talent. Um, then we get Deadly Coil. Well, th this is technically improved Deadly Coil. It just reduces the cost because we do get Deadly Coil by default. Uh, for row 6, you get the. This is where you start making choices, really. Falling Shadows, Pestilence, and then you get a choice node. Um, one thing here to mention Pestilence, I hope they rework the way it actually functions because on paper it seems cool, but all the hidden interactions behind it make it not that useful. Uh, so the choice node is between Unholy Pact and Defile, they're both... Defile hasn't seen use in a long time, but with certain builds, it might actually make a comeback. Then another choice node between Bursting Swords and Ebon Fever. Um, again, both of these saw uses um, in specific situations, but with the way this talent tree is looking, they might actually be like pretty cool choices to make here. Then you get Infected Claws and all will serve. In row 7, uh, Pestilent Postrals, Unholy Command. Uh, this makes it so your death cooldown reduces the cooldown of Dark Transformation. Um, Army of the Dead, of course, core ability or core cooldown for Unholy. You get Improved Death Coil. I guess Improved, improved Death Coil. We do get Death Coil by default. I'm not sure exactly on the interaction here. <laughs> but this makes it so your death coil does more damage. And it shoots out two death coils, one on your main target and one on an additional nearby enemy. I'm curious how this function is on single target. Do you just not get a second death coil? Or does it the second one also strike your main target? Who knows? But it could be cool. Reaping. This is the first talent where I looked at it and I was like, wow. Unholy DK had the execute niche. Uh, if you think back to like Castle Nathria, Unholy DK was the highest execute class. I think it was even higher than Warriors. Uh, well, kind of depended on the timing. But your Soul Reaper, Skirt Strike, Festering Strike, and Death Coil deal 20% increased damage to enemies below 35% health. This might make 
on Holy DK again, an absolutely insane execute class. Row 8, we get Death Rot. Um, Sudden Doom causes your Death Coil to burst up to 2 additional Festering Wounds and increases the Shadow Damage the target takes from you by 4% per wound popped. So we kind of have a version of this in PvP where Death Coil will burst Festering Wounds. However, we didn't have a use or we didn't have access to it in PvE. So being able to pop uh, wounds with Death Coil procs is definitely something I think is very cool because it helps manage your resources a little bit better because a big thing on Holy DK struggles with is you just get overwhelmed with resources. Um, so being able and having like additional things that will use up your wounds on the target means that you faster strike more uh, so you're using more runes than if you're just like skirt striking a bunch. Then you get Apocalypse and Unholy Blight. These function the same way. In row 9, this is again where... Ooh, baby. We get Festermite back. So back in BFA, Festermite was one of the big reasons that made Unholy DK the absolute king of massive AoE pool. There was no other class that even came close to the amount of damage on Holy DK was able to do on massive pulls, and subsequently funneled the damage into a primary target, uh, which is why you saw like a bunch of mobs being pulled on top of bosses in Mythic Plus and the MDI, and then the Unholy DK just melting everything. Uh, and Festermite played a huge role behind that. So if you didn't play back then, what it does is it gives you strength every time you pop a wound. But it doesn't refresh, it just lasts 20 seconds. So you stack it as high as you can, and then at, after 20 seconds it resets to zero and you start again. So you essentially enter these Festermite windows, what we call them, where you set up for a Festermite, set up a bunch of wounds, and then pop as many as you could super quickly, so then you would have that strength buff for as long as possible. And then towards the end of the buff, again, you let it drop off and just set up another Festermite window. The play style behind it, on single target specifically, or, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit annoying, but no one can deny that Festermite was an absolutely insanely strong talent back in BFA. And then we get Frenzy Monstrosity, which is the legendary that we have right now. Morbidity? Um, I don't know if we have something similar to this. Um, I, I might just be overlooking it. Diseased enemies take 6% increased damage per disease they are affected by. So if you have Unholy Blight um, and, you know, Enfeeble, things like that, the more diseases you have on your target, the more damage they take. So there are potential builds that are going to revolve around diseases. Um, and then lastly, in this row, we have Unholy Aura, which used to be a PvP talent, and it did not work like this. <laughs> All enemies within 8 yards take 20% increased damage from your minions. Not from you, just from your minions. So again, it this kind of opens the door and gives you a hint towards the potential builds you might have. Uh, because of course Unholy Aura will then lead into su the Summon Gargoyle talent. So the Summon Gargoyle build will mostly revolve around your pets doing a lot of the damage. But as we move down to row 10, on the left hand side we have Unholy Assault, in the middle Army of the Damned, and on the right hand side Summon Gargoyle. The way I see the Unholy talent tree playing out is that the left hand side is all about uh, wounds. You build wounds, you burst wounds, you get bonuses from wounds. The right hand side is all about pets. Uh, your pets deal extra damage, um, you have more pets, and so on and so forth. And then the middle is kind of the balance. It's some talents that have to do with pets, some that have to do with diseases. It's kind of a, a balance. So the three possible builds will still kind of be the same. You will have a wound build which is what we saw in BFA and Keys. On the right-hand side, I believe you will have more of a pet build, which is a single target slash boss build. And in the middle, you have kind of a balanced build where you're, you have army, army more often. Um, so it's going to kind of come down to just tuning, whether or not you're going to go with the Army of the Damned build that we've been playing for a long time, or like a Gargoyle build, or timings. Um, Gargoyle has been a dead talent for a very long time, so I really hope that they get the tuning correctly on it because it's been something that I think a lot of DKs enjoyed playing, but it has to do damage for everyone to enjoy playing it. So that was the Unholy DK talent tree. Let's look at Frost. 
again, the first couple rows are you just get your abilities. You get Frost, Frost Strike, Obliterate, Howling Blast, Killing Machine, Rhyme, um, Unleash Frenzy, which is a conduit we have right now, Runic Command, uh, increases your Runic Power, Improve Frost Strike, Passive, get Remorseless Winter. Row 5, you get a Passive, you get Pillar, um, Improve Rhyme, it just makes it a little bit stronger. And row 6, again, is where you kind of start having choices. Um, you have the first choice node between Frigid Executioner and Rage of the Frozen Champion. This is essentially, do you want Cold Tiras or do you want Rage of the Frozen Champion? Um, so Obliterate has a chance to refund runes, or your Rhyme uh, gives you runic power. Then you get Improved Killing Machine. Um, frost or your Obliterate will deal frost damage, uh, so it makes it work with Mastery. Then again, you get a choice between Inoxorable Assault and Cold Heart, a choice that we've been making for a long while, so it's going to be the same. Uh, and then you get another choice node between Avalanche and Frozen Pulse. Again, these are on the same talent row going back like three expansions, so it's just going to be what's tuned better. Um, then we get Biting Cold, which is currently a legendary, so Remorseless Winter deals more damage, and when you strike three targets, you get a free Rhyme proc. And then this is the one I'm excited for, it's Chill Streak. So Chill Streak is of course PvP talent, but having access to it in PvE makes it much, much more interesting in my opinion. There were always bosses where Chill Streak was absolutely nuts. Um, when you have two targets, maybe three targets, making good use of Chill Streak uh, can be extremely rewarding as a Frost DK. In row 7, we emerge your sufficiency, Might of the Frozen Waste, um, increases your blood damage with two-handed weapons, and crits will grant you Killing Machine. Um, we get Enduring Strength. When Pillar expires, your strength is increased by 10% for 6 seconds, and this lasts 2 seconds longer for each Obliterate and Frost Sight crit during Pillar. Uh, again, this is something that we had in the past uh, in BFA where you would spam out a ton of frost sites during your pillar in Mythic Plus, and then you would have this buff for essentially the entirety entire time until your next pillar came back up. Now, in Dragonflight, is going to be a little bit weaker because pillar only lasts 12 seconds, back then it lasts 15, and the cooldown was also shorter. But still, it's kind of cool. Um, because, of course, this is a talent that will synergize with builds where you're just either spamming Obliterate or Frost Sight during your pillar uh, versus like Obliteration builds where you're weaving abilities. Um, then you get Frost Whelp, same as before. You deal a mini Syndra, um, and then you get Mastery per target's hit. Gathering Storm works the same as right now. Any power rune weapon, like I said, it's going to give your Empowered Rune Weapon an additional charge. So you will get two charges of Empowered Rune Weapon if you take this and the one in the General Tree, which is pretty cool. Then again, you get a choice between Piercing Chill and Enduring Chill. Piercing makes it so enemies take 5% increased damage from Chill Shriek each time they are struck. This is going to be really good for like PvP and if there's two targets, because you're going to stack it um, a lot more. I assume this stacks. Whereas Enduring Chill makes it so each time it bounces, there's a chance that you will get an extra bounce. So instead of 9, it will bounce 10, 11, 12, 13, whatever times, depending on your RNG, which is potentially going to be a lot more useful for like dungeons, uh, or maybe in PV where you have multiple targets. Then in row 8, you get Glacial Advance, same as now. Bone Grinder, this is pretty cool. So whenever you consume a killing machine, you get 1% crit for 6 seconds. Once you consume your fifth killing machine, you will actually do 10% increased frost damage for 10 seconds. So again, this is going to set up smaller burst windows where you, if you time your pillar of frost with your bone grinder uh, bonus and stuff like that, you're potentially going to get a lot of extra damage uh, during those 10 seconds. Everfrost uh, makes your remorseless winter deal increased damage to enemies it hits. Then you get frost sight. Now, in row 9, you get Cold Blooded Rage. Frost Strike has. Frost Strike crits um, have a 10% chance to grant Killing Machine. Kind of boring. Uh, Frost Worm Fury, of course, iconic ability that you must have. 
Um, invigorating Freeze. Frost Fever. Critical Strikes increase the chance to grant Runic Power by an additional 10%. This is something that will synergize with Breath of Sinfragosa builds mostly. And in the last row, this is where kind of the capstone talents come in. You get Obliteration, Ice Cap. So you have to make a decision here between Obliteration and Ice Cap. But this is where some of the talents before it, um, I don't know if I, Ice Cap was good in the past. And a lot of the components that made it good, like Frost Whelps, uh, for example, are making a comeback. So Ice Cap has the potential of making a comeback. Obliteration, on the other hand, I, don't know, I find it kind of boring personally, but who am I to say? Um, absolute zero. This is kind of a PvP specific thing. Um, a lot of Frosty kids use this legendary that makes your Frostworm have half uh, reduced off of its cooldown, and also it will freeze enemies for three seconds. Then, of course, on the right hand side, you get Breath of Sintragosa because, of course, you must have Breath of Sintragosa. And if you don't like Breath of Sintragosa, I don't have anything, but you're wrong. Uh, so for Frost DK, the way I see this playing out is on the left-hand side, you get kind of a lot more Obliterate-focused talents. Right-hand side, a lot more Runic power and uh, more talents that feed into Breath of Sintragosa a little bit. And then down the middle, it's more generic and balanced stuff. But the builds that you're going to play are going to be largely the same. You're either going to play a Breath of Sintragosa build or like you know, an ice cap slash obliteration build. Now lastly, let's take a look at the blood decay talents here. First couple of rows, you get your basic abilities. You get Heart Strike, Mara Ren, Blood Boil, Foul Bulwark, Crimson Scourge, Blood Boils, Increased Charged. Um, improved Bone Shield, you get 10% haste when you have Bone Shield active. Um, improved Heart Strike, Heart Strike, deals more damage. Blood Fortification, um, increases stamina, causes uh, reduced damage taken, and Rune Tap. Row 5, you get Blood Tap, Reinforced Bones, just gain extra armor, Leeching Strikes, Heart Strike heals you for 0.5% health each time an enemy is hit that is affected by your Blood Plague. You get Vampiric Blood, Hasty Bargain, whenever you get a D&D proc, you get 6% haste. Um, Death's Caress, they added a component where you will get two Bone shield charges when you press it, and it will now have a six second cooldown. So I don't know how I feel about that. That's caress was one of those, or that's caress was one of those abilities that you kind of just use to tag stuff and pull them into mythic plus or whatever. But if it actually gives you bone shield, it might be useful. Like you use it right when you run in, just so you run in with at least two charges instead of zero. Um, so it might be a little bit more useful now. Then row six, you get a choice between Blood Drinker and Consumption. Of course, Blood Drinker, single target, Consumption, AoE. Then another choice between Mark of Blood and Tombstone. Both of these talents are good. Mark of Blood is a lot more single target specific, whereas Tombstone is way more versatile. And as you will see, since they are adding the set bonus that we have right now in Shadowlands into the talent tree, Tombstone is of course going to have synergy with that as it does right now. Um, then you get another choice between Voracious and Bloodworms. Again, a talent choice that we've been making for a long time. Lastly, you get Relish and Blood. In row 7, you get Ossuary. Then you get Improved Vampiric Blood. It just makes your Vampla stronger. Hemostasis works the same way as it has in the past. And the Heartbreaker also works the same way as it has in the past. Row 8, Rapid Decomp. Your Blood Plague, Death and Decay deal damage more often. And you leech more health with your Blood Plague. Dancing Rune Weapon, this is where you get your DRW, and this is where you get Gorfin's Grasp, your Mass Grip. In Row 9, you get Shattering Bone. When bo a Bone Shield is consumed, it shatters, dealing damage to nearby enemies. The damage is tripled to enemies affected by Death and Decay. This is where general talents like two charges of Death and Decay probably come in very handy, because if you constantly have Death and Decay down, each time your Bone Shield pop damage will de deal triple. Uh, so as Blood, you almost have 100% uptime on your DND anyway, but with the double DND talent, you're pretty much guaranteed to have 100% uptime. Here we also get Heartrend. Um, 
Heart Strike has a chance to reduce the runic power cost of your next Death Strike by 10 and deal additional 40% damage uh, of your missing health. Um, so again, the lower HP you are, the more damage you deal, and also your Death Strike costs less. So for single target bosses where you're getting chunked often, this might be an absolutely insane talent. Next we get Crimson Rune Weapon. Uh, Dancing Rune Weapon generates 5 Bone Shield charges, and whenever a charge is used, the cooldown is reduced by 5 seconds. So this is something that we have right now in the form of a set bonus. Actually no, Legendary, sorry. Uh, so again, the synergy between this and a few other DRW talents is going to make it so you will have extremely high uptime on DRW. Then you have Tightening Grasp, which makes your mass grip apply a debuff to all enemies hit that causes them to take 10% increased damage from you. This is pretty interesting. Uh, then we get Red Thirst, CDR on Vamp Blood. Row 10, uh, these are the capstone talents. We get Bone Storm, Everlasting Bond, uh, summons an additional copy of DRW, and each rune spent increases the duration by half a second. We get Purgatory, and Unquenchable Thirst. Uh, while Vampiric Blood is active, you store a portion of your Death Strike healing, and when your Vamp Blood expires, it will splatter nearby enemies dealing 100% of the stored healing as shadow damage. Depending on how much actually gets stored, this might be a super cool talent. What I'm noticing with the blood talent tree is that a lot of times you will make choices between more damage or more tankiness or utility. And being able to shift between and balance how much tankiness you want and how much um, damage you want is extremely important. Uh, because as a lot of you know, early on when you're undergeared, you want to be more tanky uh, since stuff hits you harder, you have less HP, so on and so forth. But then once you start outgearing stuff, you can start shifting those points from things like Rune Tab, for example, um, or some other talents like Improved Vamp Blood, and you can shift those talents towards more damage, more DRW uptime, things like that. So the interactions between the spec talents and the general talents is definitely going to be super interesting to see. And I'm very excited to see how all of these talents are going to play out. One question I have for all of you is, what is a spell that Death Knights have had in the past that you would like to see added to this talent tree? If I think back to Wad, um, obviously there are a few options, uh, most specifically Necrotic Plague, a lot of DKs bring it up. It was an absolutely fun build. If I think about utility and defensive talents, uh, we go straight to Legion with Mirror Ball, which cleansed you or dispelled you whenever you AMS, absolutely broken. Uh, so maybe a light version of that, if not that talent. But things like that, I really wish that they found a way to kind of add back into the talent tree. What are some spells that you think should be added back? Let me know in the comment section below. And again, thank you so much for watching this video. Keep your eye on this channel if you want more Dragonflight content. Once they you know, keep releasing blue posts and eventually release alpha and beta, I will be posting more content on the channel. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe um, to get notified whenever I post new videos.